Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And throughout this section, we've been going over the account details, especially domains, SMTP, payment gateways. And the other day, I was building out a new site for a campaign management program that we run. And I just thought after I got done with it, I thought, you know, this is a really good site to build live just to show people how all of the different integrations can work within your site. So that's what we're going to do right now is we're going to go back through and we're going to build out this entire site. First, I'll show you what it looks like inside of the editor. So here it is inside the editor. We got just uh, really one, two, three, and then footer. We got four basic sections. We have one column row, one column row, and then a two column row right here, and again a one column row down at the bottom. So it's pretty simple. Where it gets a little more complicated is we have a button here for our credit or debit card. We have one for a PayPal, and we have one button that is hidden for the uh, for the Apple or Android Pay button that would only be visible on mobile. So let me show you what it looks like live. So here it is live, and if you come into this area here and you click on this, it will open up the credit card and a button to click once you fill out your credit card information. And if you click on PayPal, it'll actually open up a new page right over the top of this page wherein the customer can come in and we'll just click here just to look at the information. It shows the name of my LLC, the name of the program they're purchasing, and of course the amount that they're purchasing. They can log in to PayPal or they can buy as a guest and just fill out all their information here. And if they click on the button down here to cancel, it'll take them back to the page that they had come from. If they were to finish out the form, they would actually go then to a thank you page. And now let's take a look at what it will look like on mobile. Let me grab my phone. And this is what it will look like on mobile. Let me move my mouse out of there. And so let me scroll down to the bottom because that's really what we want to look at is the Apple or Android pay button. And let me refresh the page so that it hides the button. And now once we click on the Apple Android pay button, the actual pay button will pop up below it. And then when we click on that, the account details will pop up where if I double click on the right hand side where it's flashing right there, that will um, activate the purchase at that point. But we don't want to buy this right now, so let's cancel out of this. So in order to get working on this, let's uh, clear that out. And the first thing I want to do is because I want to leave this page open so we can see what's all in it. I want to come in and I want to unhide a bunch of the elements. So every element that is hidden, we will unhide. And as I said, one of the elements only shows in mobile, so we have to go into mobile. Come down, find that element. Click on the settings and then tell it to be all. And then when we go back into the desktop, then all of our elements will be showing here for the Apple Android Pay and the button below it to actually activate the payment. So now let's go in and let's start building out a new funnel. So we're going to click on Add New. And we're going to use the Classic Builder. And we're going to create a custom file. And what we're going to do is let's just call this um, CMA Case Study. Select a group to put it into. Let's put this into, we'll just put it into the same group and we will click on build funnel. Now the funnel type we need to use will be a sales funnel opt-in, I'm sorry, order form. So it needs to be an order form type because we need the credit card information and other things. And I have a blank template here that I made. So let's just click on the blank template and then click on edit the page. First thing we want to do when we get into the page is we want to go to settings and go through and see which of the things in the settings we need to set up. Integrations we don't need to worry about because we'll use Actionetics. SEO metadata will of course get that set up. But let's just see what we're going to call this. Let's just call it Campaign Managers Academy. 
And for right now, I'm going to skip the description and filling out all of the rest of this because we'll go into this in much more detail in a later training. And now let's come down. We don't need anything for tracking code or custom CSS. But the background, we do want to put in a background texture or image behind it. So let's just click on this. And again, we'll go into more of this later as well when we get into images and backgrounds and colors and everything else. But right now I just typed in BG dash because I have a lot of backgrounds uh, stored in here and they all start with BG dash something. So let's just click on this one and use this as our background. And we want to set this to no repeat. So it really kind of blurs it out in the back. Now back into our settings, we're going to go into typography. And I just want to use a basic open sans for all the elements. So we'll click on that. And the text color, let's just put it to this color right here. And the link color, blue is fine because we're not going to have any links. And then we'll go down to general. And we don't have any digital assets. We don't have to worry about the on submit go to the affiliate badge. We're going to hide that and search engines. We're just going to leave that hidden as well. So we have that done. Let's just click on save. Want to make sure you click on save on a regular basis. And so now let's add a new section at the top and we will click on full width. And we want to make this a single column row. And then in here, we know we're going to put in a text element. So we want to put in a subheadline element. And now we're going to go, let's go back to the first one here. We had a headline section and then we had the order form section. So let's go back in here. And what, what we're going to do, and I've showed you this before, what I like to do is name my sections because as you get more and more and more sections, you have a hard time figuring out which ones they are sometimes. So we're just going to call this preheader, and we're going to click on update. Now we're going to create another new section, and we're going to go full width on that. And we're going to do, again, a one column row. I could have probably just copied this one up here. And we're just going to put in some elements. Now here we're going to use the headline element because this is what will become our H1 tag when we apply the SEO plugin that I built. Inside of ClickFunnels, it does not natively make H1 tags, H2 tags, or paragraph tags. So I wrote a little plugin that will do that for you. But for SEO purposes, you only ever want one H1 tag. And so I only use one headline element and all the rest of them are either subheadline or paragraph elements. So let's just add in a couple more subheadlines because I had several of them. And let's just clone this twice. And we'll grab this and drag it down. And now let's go over and let's name this section. And we'll call it headline. Now we got two more sections to go. We're going to have our order form section where we're going to need a two column row. And on the left hand side, we're going to want a video. And below that, we're going to want a paragraph. And on the right hand side for right now, we'll just put in a subheadline element. We have a whole bunch more elements to go into here. And so let's name this section. We will call it order. And then down at the very bottom, we're going to put in a footer section. And for right now, I will just call that footer. Now, when you go into your sections and you click on manage, you're going to see we have our names, preheader, headline, order, and footer. And then if we go into our rows, you're going to see that same name of the section above each of the various rows. 
And the same thing if we go into columns or into elements. And as you get more and more of these, uh, it makes more sense. And you can easily then find the section that each one of these elements is in. So now let's go back to our original and see what it looks like because we're going to start building this out. So let's just go back up to the top and let's just work on this one to begin with. So let's look at our settings for our header. We have no padding there. And let's look at it for the row. We have 20 and 20 for padding there. We got a blue background with white text. So let's see what we can do here. That blue color, I just took a standard blue color from right here. We're going to get rid of all the padding. For the row, it was 20 and 20. We can leave that. For the text, we want this to be white. Actually, we want this to be bold as well. Bold and white. Okay. Now for this section, we want a two pixel border at the bottom of it. Bottom only, two pixel. Now normally when I'd be out picking a color, I would go to Palatin and I would find my colors there. But what I'm going to do here just on the fly really quickly, we just want to go with a little bit darker color of blue and two pixels. So we'll pick a color right here. And then we're going to come into the section below it. We're going to make a one pixel wide border at the top. And we'll make it even a little bit darker than that last one. So it kind of creates a little bit of a, well, besides the shadow, it creates a little bit of a gradient as it comes down. It's actually a trick I, I picked up from Russell. So we have our headline up here, our pre-header. And actually, while we're here, let me do this real quick. I want to change the CSS on that to make a little bit of a shadow around it. So let's copy that off. It's, it's something I like to do whenever I have white on a darker background. So let's um, paste this in. And it's just text shadow. One pixel, one pixel, zero pixels, and pound zero 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 zero, which is black. You could just put in three zeros, but I generally put in all six. We'll come back out, and now you can see there is a black line around this and makes that headline pop out a lot better. So now let's go in and, um, well, why don't I do this? Why don't I, I wasn't going to do this originally, but let me just copy out the actual text we have just so we build this thing out exactly the same. And so then in our main headline here, let's do this. And let's see what size this is. 40 pixels and mobile is 24. Okay. Now let's look at our next line. Copy that. 28 and 20. And then for our last line, let's go back over here first. Copy that. It's all bold. And let's see, the text size is 16 and 16. that bold mm -hmm. 
16 and 16 and our bold text color we're just going to make probably had it be that color okay again i would use palatin to pick out specific colors but in this case when i built this i was in such a hurry i just uh, threw it together as quickly as i possibly could so now let's look at spacing on this top element and in the section we got 0 0 20 20 Okay, let's see. 0, 20, 20. So that looks pretty much the same. Okay, so we'll stop fussing around with that because here is the section that really needs the majority of the work. Let's just uh, duplicate that. Um, let me see here. First off, it's a little off center, if I recall. Yeah, so we have we have to move this over slightly. I don't know why this isn't lining up right on here, but it hasn't been the last couple of days. And so now let's put in what we have for a headline right here. Copy. It's bold, and it's twenty three. And it's 23, so that's good to go. And let's just check on what the spacing is. Well, we'll come back to this later because we'll uh, I'll show you how to put in these different uh, borders around the outside. Actually, technically, they are shadows. So the first thing we have to build out now is we need to put in the um, the selector here, and then we're going to put in the product summary in here as well. So let's find those two elements. So we have our order selector, and we also have an order summary. If you had multiple Stripe products, they would all show up here because you could have three, four, five products, however many, and then somebody would just click on the radio icon to pick out which one they wanted. Now, in our case, we're only going to have one product, so what I want to do is I actually want to hide this element because it's kind of redundant to have it on the page when it's going to be clicked anyway. But you do have to put it on the page in order to get the order form to work properly. So it has to be on the page, but you can hide it. So now let's put in two input elements because we need to put in our, where it is it? We need to put in a full name, which is what we wanted to capture. Plus, we need to have an email address in here again in order for the um, in order for the order form to work properly. So we will just instead of hitting that, let's just come back in here and we will just duplicate this again. And so the first one, we're going to say we want this to be a full name, and we'll just say your full name here. and we will have that be required. And on the second one, we will have this be an email element. And that automatically is required. Okay. So now what do we need to have? We have a divider and another subheadline. So let's just clone this headline. We'll drag it down. And now we'll add in a divider. And with that divider, we're going to make it 75% on the width. I already know the top margin, I'm pretty sure, was 15 or 20. We're going to center it. I want to make it 5 pixels high. And what I want to do is actually make it opaque, make it not visible because I want to come in and I want to apply a dark bottom or bottom dark um, shadow to it. So it kind of creates a, a shadow effect like that. So now let's come back in and let's see here. So it's a 30 pixels. T 
top margin there and this one here seems to be a little bit too low yeah, let's make it 15. okay what do we need next let's see we need three identical buttons like this so let's create one we'll get it all set up and then we will clone it so we'll come back into the page we're working on let's click on the plus button and let's put in a button and we're going to call this credit slash debit card we're going to change the background color to white we're going to change the text color to black okay good and then we need to come into an advanced and we need to change the button width to fill width. So that gives us that full effect. So for right now, we will leave the button action unset and we will go see what we need next. So we need a credit card and then a button below the credit card. So let's come in, we'll click on this. We'll go and find our credit card element. Put that into place and then we will find a button element for it and what did I say on this here yes enroll me today just copy that out and the subtext was this copy that And the background color, we want to make the same blue as the top. Okay, so now after that, we have our two more buttons. And then we have Apple Pay and we have an image. So we're almost done building this out. So let's just duplicate this twice. And let's see, we say PayPal and Apple Android Pay. Okay, we have both of those buttons done. Now we need to put in our Apple Pay element. Okay, which says it will display when available, and then we're going to put in the credit card element at the very bottom. Open this up, go find our images, which I'm pretty sure was on page two. There it is. And besides the footer, we have put all of the elements into the page. So now let's take a closer look and how did this get up here? And so we'll delete that out because that got up there somehow. So we'll take that out. And now let's do the next thing, which I want to put a border around this entire section. But I don't want to use an actual border. I just want to use a drop shadow of 40%. Now let's see, make sure we have, you want to make sure you have room between the top of the section and the, which we only need about five. We want room between the top of the section and the top of the row because if you don't, it'll actually cut off that drop shadow because that'll be outside of the section. So as long as you got five there, you're okay. Now let's go back into it and instead of a square corner, let's just make a 5% radius around the corner. Now here we want to do the same thing. Let me go back and show you. So the first one, the outside, we have this all set now. Now we want to do the inside as well. Now where you have to do that is inside of the column. 
So let's go up and click on our column and we can scroll down to our order section, second column. And we want to do the same thing here, except not a drop shadow. We want to do a 40% inner shadow and we want to make a five pixel corner as well. So now we get a better idea of how this is going to look. So we can clearly see that this element is way too close to the top. So we can move that down. Oops, wrong one. So we have to go back into our column and we have to create some padding at the top. So let's just put in 20 pixels for padding. Let's put in another 20 at the bottom. And if we, if we move this, it's going to, if we move this down to zero, it's going to look funny. So we're going to leave this at at least 10. Let's even bring it up to 20. So we have a little bit of room all the way around all of the elements. So, okay, so that's starting to look good. Now let's go back into our original and we can hide this element. And we have pretty much consistent spacing throughout. So let's just make it look good on our page. That's probably okay. Maybe let's see what happens if we put in, I think we put in margin. Okay, we'll bring it down a little bit. Okay. Probably too far. Let's bring it down to. Okay, we're good there. Let's just leave that for now. Okay, so now let's set up our button actions. What we want to happen is when, well, let's start with this button action down here. When this button is clicked, we want it to submit the form. So it'll submit the credit card, the email, the full name, all that will get submitted and the name and the email will get saved into the profile database. So we just set, set our button action to submit the form. So we're good there. It says submit the page. And then what we want to do for this button action is we want to show the credit card and the button when this button is clicked. So we click on that. We go to set action show hide action and we want to show these elements and we can scroll down and as you can see on the, on over here as I go over these elements they turn blue so we can come down to where we have to be so here's one element we want to show and the next one is the button that we want to show and now what we can do is we can go into these elements, we can click on the settings and we can hide that element or we could go up to elements up here at the top and manage the elements, come into our order form section and scroll down and we would find this button right here under the credit card form and we can hide that button right there. Now for PayPal, we'll set that up in a minute because we actually have to go out and create a PayPal button and get a link for that. So we'll leave that one alone for now. But in case of the Android Pay, we got the same thing. We need to show this button or show this, this um, yeah, I guess it is a button. It'll be a button uh, once you're on a mobile device. We'll show this button once the this button is clicked. There's enough buttons in there. So let's go here, come down. We're going to show, and it will be this one right here. And now we'll come in and we'll hide this element. And then the Apple Android Pay button, we need to say that that's going to be mobile only because we don't need to show that on a desktop because it doesn't work there. It'll only work on iPhones. It might work on Safari. I've tested it on Safari, but I couldn't get it to work. So I'm just going to say it's only good for mobile devices. So we will make that mobile only, which pops us into our mobile layout. But then when we go back to desktop, then it will be gone. So now let's come down to the bottom and what we want to do actually is to delete out this section we put in because we're just going to grab a template that I made and we're going to add that section because it's going to be a footer that I already had made for my other sites. So let's just come down here and we got the CF Ninja Hack footer. So let's grab that, drag it all the way down to the bottom and we will just drop it right here. 
And as you can see, the background has my big menacing ninja guy on it. So let's cut that background out and we will make the top margin zero, but we'll give it a hundred padding for now. Let's see what it looks like. And you're going to see that, uh, we need to work on some colors real quickly. We'll so I just stopped recording for a moment and cleaned this up down here at the bottom so we have a little bit of a basic footer with the terms of service, privacy policy, disclaimer. And I always put down here this little link at the bottom just in case somebody's wondering how this site got built. They can click on this and hopefully I can get an, um, an affiliate to sign up uh, by having them click on that link. So right now let's save this because we're going to jump out and we have to start creating our products in order to make the site work. So let's come back into our order step and let's go to publishing and I want to change the name of this page or the path of this page because as I discuss in other training later on, it's really important to have a good name for your step. So let's uh, just... Uh, put in here join today as our funnel step name we will clean out the path and we will click on update funnel step because people will actually look at that path when they come into your site so now the path is join today with a bunch of numbers at the end if you want to have a clean path at the end you come in to the step itself and we're going to change this to join today and then for the path, you go join dash today, all lowercase, and we will update the page. Now, it won't show here, but if somebody types in the name of the funnel, the funnel domain slash join today, they will come there. Or if they just type in the domain itself, it will just show the join today at the end without these numbers. So now let's go into our account details, come down to our domains. Let's pick a domain to use. Let's just use this one here, realmarketingmembers.com. And we need to set the default and the 404 error page so that people will go to the first page in the funnel. Let's click on this and scroll all the way down. CMA case study slash join today. That's what we're looking for. And we'll click on save. And we will do the exact same thing for the 404 page. And then we will save that as well. So now we have our domain set up. We have our default pages set up. And in our funnel step, we have our paths set up as well. So now the next thing we need to look at is let's go to settings. And we're going to want to know our SMTP configuration. We have the choice of three of them and we'll just go back here real quick into our account details and look at our outgoing SMTP. And we had two of them set up to work with Actionetics and we had one set up to work with SendGrid. We're going to just pick the one for the Campaign Managers Academy for the internal. So we're going to use that one and we'll just click on that. Right now, I don't have an icon for the favicon, so I'm not going to put that in, and we don't really need any header or footer code either. Now, we have a Stripe account, and again, we should have two different Stripe accounts. So we go back to our payment gateways, and we have our CF Ninja Hack Stripe account, which is set as the default, and we have the CMA Stripe account as well as our PayPal version 2 gateway as well. So we come back into here and under Stripe, we can pick which one of the two we want. If you don't, it'll default to the CF Ninja Hacks, but I want to use the CMA Stripe, so we will do that. And right now, let's turn on the test mode because we are going to want to test this once we get all the products loaded up. Now it's time to set up our first product, which is going to be the PayPal product. So we got our third party membership access and we're going to add our product. And I'm just gonna call this product CMA, let's just call it CMA test. Our billing integration will be PayPal. The amount of this will be $297. US currency, 
price display on order form, we're going to just say introductory price at $297. And then our cart product, we're just going to call this CMA-297 test. And so let's just copy that out. Now what we have to do is we have to go back into our PayPal account and up at the top it'll say tools, come down to all tools and we will scroll down to PayPal buttons and we want a buy now button and we're going to just call this again CMA test. Our item ID is what I just copied out. Our price is going to be $297. There's nothing else you need to do here except come down to the very bottom. And we're going to fill in three blanks here. We need the URL where we want them to go back to if they were to cancel their checkout. And then the URL where we want them to go to when they finish their checkout. And then down here we need our advanced variable which is going to be a webhook that we're going to copy off of the page right now. We'll just put that in there and we will grab this webhook. And this webhook will be the same for all of the products, all of the third-party products like this PayPal version one we're doing, all of them within this funnel. So this is dependent upon the funnel, not the product. So now we're going to jump back out of this and what we're going to do is we're just going to click on create the product right now because we're, we got all the information in here we need. And we'll come back up to the top and we need to copy out this URL except I just realized we don't have our domain name set up. So let's click back on settings. Missed that when we came back through. And so we'll click on domain settings and we were doing real marketing members. So we'll click on that and go down to the bottom and save and update. And sometimes it takes a minute or two for it to populate, so you may have to reload the page. Now it has populated, so we're going to copy that out. We're going to go back into PayPal. We're going to check that little box, and we're going to paste it in. Now we need to add a new step because we need a thank you page for them to go to after the purchase is complete, whether it's a Stripe product or a PayPal product. So we're just going to call this page thank you. And we're going to create a funnel step. We're going to come in to opt in and click on thank you. So let's just grab my blank template and we will grab this URL and put it into PayPal. Now we can click on create the button. And as I explained earlier, you can take this entire bit of content right here and create this as a form and put what this is, what this button looks like right here. You can put that into any web page. But what we want to do is we want to just grab the link. So we'll copy that. We'll come back in. We'll go to join today because we need to paste this link into our PayPal button. Come down, open up the PayPal button, set the action, you have to wipe out the pound sign and paste it in, and we will click save. Now the last thing we need to do is to create our Stripe product, so let's jump back out of here. Come over to products, add a product, and we'll also call this one CMA test. We want to use Stripe. Now here is showing that we have the CF Ninja Hacks account for Stripe. So let's uh, so that's not going to be right. So let's back out of this here. Let's go to settings. And for some reason it went back to internal here. I guess we jumped out of here and we didn't save that before. So we'll come down to CMA Stripe. We're going to turn test mode on. Let's make sure everything else saved. We have the domain name. We got our product down here. So let's save an update. Now let's go back into our product add product CMA test now we have the right stripe integration we want 297 US dollars introductory price here you have to put in a product description or it won't work so we're just going to do campaign managers Academy and then we're going to create our product and so now our product is created and so when we run this page that will just automatically populate 
into the selector section. And because we're hiding that, because there's only one product, it will then automatically go into the order summary as well. So let's go back to join today. And I guess there's one last thing I needed to show you, and that was setting up the Apple Pay. So let's come back into our CMA Stripe. And in order to set up Apple Pay, you just click on the name of the domain that you're going to be working in. So in this case, it's going to be Real Marketing Members. We click on that domain, and we click on Update Stripe Account. So now let's go into our Stripe account and take a look at what it looks like in there for Apple Pay. And at the top, make sure you pick the right account. We want the campaign managers. And even now, since filming the original version of this, really just within the last week, they've changed a bunch of settings on here already. I think it was you came in under billing and it would show you your Apple Pay here or under payments. I forget where it was. But now in order to see your Apple Pay, you need to click on settings and come over to Apple Pay and it will show you all the domains that you have linked to your Apple Pay. And here's the one that we just turned on. It takes really just a matter of a minute or two to activate this within your Stripe account. So now let's come back out of here. Let's go back to our page. And I think at this point, let's just take a look back in here again. I think we've got everything set up in order to be able to test this. Okay, I'd probably want to clean up the spacing on some of this stuff a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. Let's just go back out and test it to make sure that all of the payment gateways and everything else is working just fine. So let's right click on this link. We're going to open it in incognito. So the domain name is right. The path is correct without any numbers at the end. So that's looking good. We'll come down to the bottom, click on our credit debit card. Both of these opened up properly. That's good. Let's now copy off this credit card number. Put it in. Three numbers. Any date out into the future. And yes, enroll me today. Whoa, it didn't work. Guess what? We didn't put in our name. So let's just put in our name and an email address real quick. And now let's do it all over again. It says it's submitting, and it should take us to the thank you page when we're done. And it did that. Very good. Now let's X out of this, and let's open this up again in a new window. This time we're going to try the PayPal integration. But the way you'd want to test the PayPal integration is you'd want to change the price to $1.00 and then run it through that way because you're gonna actually have to charge yourself a dollar and you can't do it through your own account. So you have to have somebody else do it or you have to have an account that is not attached to click funnels or anything else or you're just gonna get an error message which we'll probably get right now when I do this. So we're gonna click on PayPal. It's gonna open up the page right here. And we got our 297. Let's see. Yep, CMA test. So we got the right product. And again, as I said before, you can log in. and Well, actually, let's just log in and see what happens here because it will give us an error message once I log in. And there you go. You are logging into the account of the seller for this purchase. So again, that causes a problem, but we do know that by seeing this, that it is working properly. Now, the one last thing we have to do is we have to test this on a mobile device. Okay, so here we are on our mobile device. Let's scroll down the screen. And when we get down to the bottom, let's just check it here. Click on credit, debit, that worked. If I click on PayPal, let's see what happens there. Took us to PayPal. If we click on the cancel at the bottom, should bring us back to where we started. Okay, that's all working good. Now let's just check on our Apple Android Pay. And that button popped up, and there we go. Everything is working perfectly fine. So that was a not as quick as I thought, but it was a pretty quick tutorial on how to set up an order form with three different forms of payment.
So if you have any questions on this or anything else, feel free to reach out to me. If you have a technical question for ClickFunnels, obviously reach out to ClickFunnels support. Until next time, have a great day.